The first, our big talking point. The pledge to level up opportunity and quality of life across the UK was a cornerstone of the Tories' 2019 manifesto. A bit like a rubbish bus in the north as opposed to the slick Docklands light railway in London, it finally arrived on Wednesday. Michael Gove, the levelling up secretary, said, and I quote, it will change the economic model of this country. Now, that in itself is a huge claim of profound importance. In extremists, you can have a free market economic model, do as you will, have it reasonably regulated, and the best will thrive. Jobs are created, products produced that people actually want at home and abroad. And boom, you create wealth, pay dividends and tax and pop a bit in the bank. Or you have a planned economy, a command economy, five-year plans, government-imposed targets, progress chases from the ministry, inefficiencies nodded through, losses covered by the taxpayer, and surpluses, well, disappearing into the vaults of the Treasury. In his white paper, Michael Gove used some rather ungovian, even untory language, saying it lays out a long-term economic and social plan to make opportunity more equal. It shifts power and opportunity towards the North and Midlands and Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Well, the last Tory Prime Minister to go anywhere near that sort of language and ambition was Ted Heath in the 1970s, and that didn't end well. The detail, however, was more promising. Business people will surely welcome better transport, focused research and development and better education at a time when so many leave primary and even secondary education unable yet to read and write. Better transport and faster broadband are a given. They are the infrastructure cornerstones of the 20th and indeed the 21st century. Gove's white paper also says that pay, employment and productivity should increase and improve across the UK to reduce those regional gaps. Well, yesterday, the governor of the Bank of England said he wanted people to curb their higher pay ambitions because of inflation. The prime minister's spokesman said he disagreed. We obviously want a high growth economy. We want people's wages to increase. Now, this isn't silly sniping between Downing Street and the Bank of England. It's fundamental economic stuff. And they don't agree. The shadow levelling up secretary did agree with much in the white paper, saying it was a cut and paste job, much of which was established Labour policy. It's what Labour have always wanted to do. But when they've spelt it out in the clearest detail, it's been rejected, as Michael Foote and Jeremy Corbyn discovered to their cost. So... Is it really what a Tory government should be doing? My friend Sir Clive Jones, one of the greatest people I ever worked for, used to say that he didn't make great TV programmes, but he was an enabler of great TV programmes and great programme makers. And there's a great truth in that. So today I'm asking if the premise of the levelling up white paper, that government can tinker with our economic model to achieve a fairer, more level playing field, is politically right and economically possible. Should they be engaged in the fine detail or, more like Sir Clive, be mere enablers? Will it be enough to achieve greater economic and social equality between Burnley and Bournemouth, Teesside and the Thames Valley? Will it rob the R&D genius of Oxford and Cambridge to take a punt on Sunderland or Durham? And most important, is it doing what wealth creators want to encourage them to spread their wings and pitch their tents in those areas that the government have identified as having been left behind.